Hi, I'm Morgan Dreamus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm joined today with Thea Harrison, which everybody, of course, knows. Dragonbound won the last year's Best Book of the Year award. All of the editors at RT were like, we could not put it down. It was a gold. It was a top pick. It was it was everything. Dragonbound is probably one of the most unique and and best paranormal romances I have ever read. And I am not joking. I'm just because you're sitting here. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that because your characters of Pia and Dragos are, they're so special. Where, where did they, how did they come to you? Where, where did these characters oh originate? <laughs> um, the, it was a very organic process. Um, I have been a writer before and I've played with characters a lot in my head and I had these images, um, like for instance, the image of the dragon um, shadow over the beach um, that were just these disconnected images um, for a long time until I found the time to to write the story. And so by the time I sat down to write the story, it just unfolded. It was it was there. Um, and Pia and Dragos are very strong characters. Um, they live in my head. <laughs> and so when I actually ended up writing Lord's Fall, which is book five, um, and a direct sequel to Pia and Dragos, it was like going back to old friends. Um, that was that was yeah. really interesting for me because, like so. you said, we're going to get the same characters only a little bit later yes. in their relationship. Yes. They are mated, uh -huh. and Apia is is pregnant. Yes. Although, when you're pregnant with a dragon shifter, it takes a little bit longer than nine months. So she's going to be pregnant for a while. When you're pregnant with the only dragon shifter, <laughs> things are a little unpredictable because you don't know what the baby's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> so they are a little anxious about the whole thing. I can understand. Yeah. However, in Lord's Fall, they're actually spending a little time apart. A little time apart. Yeah. Um, not as much as the reader might think, mm -hmm. um, because Dragos has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> so it's, um, it's going to be, I think, a really fun, I hope it's going to be a really fun uh, read for readers, because I like to think that what happens is unpredictable. There's going to be a lot of fun surprises. So, so Dragos is an incredibly interesting character because he is he is so old that he has seen the cosmos be born. Uh -huh. He has been one of the mainstays throughout human history and shifter history as being one of the most powerful creatures in the world. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden he runs into Pia, who is paranormal herself. She's got some creature in her, although she does not share what she is. <laughs> and it's really interesting to see this this much younger character. She's She hasn't seen as much of the world as he has, of course. And all of a sudden he is just brought to his knees by this just really young character. And she's, and, and she's so unpredictable. To see see them together on the page I think is for me a real treat. Oh I'm so glad. It's so fun to get reader reaction because for me it's um, the reader is the reason why I do it because there's the writer reader um, relationship. Uh, I don't write in a vacuum. I want somebody to enjoy my stories. So for you to tell me that you enjoyed the story so much really makes my day. <laughs> so, well, and so we've got we've got Pia Drag Pia and Dragos, and uh -huh. they are they are the start of the series. But of course, we don't end there. We also have Dragos, his Sentinels, and of mm -hmm. course, these are also you know mythical creatures, shapeshifters, mm -hmm. and all and all other sorts of creatures. And they they start to get their stories also. We have a Thunderbird who I. I loved. Tiago. Exactly. We have, um, and then he, of course, finds his mate, and she's she's a queen. Um, we have um, a genie that we see. We have a, and then in some of your shorter stories, we have wolf shifters. We have vampires. We have uh, Medusa, where she has she has snakes <laughs> from her from her head. I, I have to ask: Is there any limit to to your imagination when it comes to your creatures? Because it seems. They fit so well into the world, but there doesn't seem to be a whole rhyme or reason of like, you just you could just make anything work in this world, it seems. <laughs> um, I tried to build, build the world big um, with the um, seven elder races so that there is a lot of um, melting pot going on, which is a lot like how the U.S. is anyway. Right. Um, and throwing the, the elder races in there kind of heightens that melting pot and the tensions, I think, uh, what I'm trying to do. And so hopefully with the seven um, races there, there's a lot of room there to build. Um, 
I love the characters. I had so much fun doing this um, Sarah Mella, who is the Medusa, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad I got the opportunity to tell her story because, I mean, had snakes, come on. I had snakes, and she, she like wraps them up, she and they kind of have her mind of their own, and, and they kind of snake own. around like and snakes honestly, would. I never expected to be able to tell that story. <laughs> But I did, and then I thought, oh God, readers are going to hate it. <laughs> you no, know, somebody's gonna we have did a, not. Somebody's going to have a snake freak out. <laughs> but, you know, nobody had a snake freak out. Nobody's done that. In fact, the, um, the re reaction has been really positive. So I'm pleased that readers have gone with me with that kind of um, creative stretch, because it is weird. <laughs> Well, another another one of your so. your characters that I think a lot of people really could relate to is you had an oracle, and mm -hmm. she was other than the fact that she's an oracle, mm -hmm. which is you know she kind of passed down through her family, mm -hmm. and she can see um, things that others can't. She is a rather normal woman, despite she the fact is. that she does have these skills, and I and she seems very relatable. Mm -hmm. I loved telling that story because to bring the extraordinary into the ordinary exactly, um, and then to look at the world through that viewpoint, you know, seeing how Grace reacted to things mm -hmm. and getting the reactions of her niece and nephew in there, mm -hmm. um, that was that was a real pleasure to write. So in Lord's Fall, we're going to be getting some new characters, and the reason for that is we have the Sentinel game. Stragos yes. has lost a few of his, his first two, two matings and two, two taking over other parts of the world, and yeah. so he has to uh, restock his, his Sentinels, I guess. Can yes. you tell me a little bit about these games? What, do, what is required to become a Sentinel? Uh, to become a Sentinel, you do have to be um, able to shift. You've got to uh, prove that you are weir. Mm -hmm. um, and um, other than that, what ends up happening, the backstory to this is that um, they put out the notice and anybody who is weird, wherever they live worldwide, can actually um, you know, come in and apply. Mm -hmm. There's a vetting process. They need to um, go through the applications and do security checks. And then it, the it's so list. funny to think about that because we do security checks in this I know, world I know. and to have it in this crazy paranormal world. I love that because there is a lot of reality. Does it make as, sense? Yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You can't just have anybody come up and give them that kind of power. No, you have to make not. sure. Yeah. So what they, they've got background <laughs> checks. They do background <laughs> checks. There's, there's an electronic application. They do background <laughs> checks. <laughs> and they have a short list of people who are eligible to enter the games. And then mm -hmm. Literally what it is, is you've got to prove whether or not you're strong enough to be a sentinel. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you go in, there's no holds barred, don't kill anybody if you can avoid it. <laughs> and, um, you know, no weapons, and other than that, who walks out is the winner. So, wow. you know. I can't wait, I'm oh. so excited. <laughs> One last thing I have to ask. You have, you're still going to be continuing your Elder Races books, but you have an entirely new series, yes. 2013. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the new series? The series is called Game of Shadows. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a Game of Shadows um, duology. There's going to be two. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is Rising Darkness, and the second one is Fallen Light. There are some differences. It is not the Elder Races um, world. It is another alternative Earth. Um, mm -hmm. And I do slightly different things in terms of point of view. Instead of just the heroine and the hero, um, I tell four points of view. Um, so there's going to be a kind of a broader outlook, um, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, I think the reader will too. It gives you, it gives you more of a rounded look, I think, at, at what's happening. One of the points of view will be the, um, the antagonist. So mm -hmm. um, you get to see how he thinks and what he does. Well, I know a really, a really important part of this new series. I was doing a little. I was doing spying online, and and <laughs> re reincarnation mm -hmm. plays a really, really big part in this series. Yes, it does. We're talking yeah. hundreds of years, people mm -hmm. being reborn and trying to mm -hmm. find each other again, so mm -hmm. they can really um, come back together to fulfill their their prophecy and what they and need to do. Fight and finish the uh, the battle that they started. So there's there's a tension and um, a conflict that goes on over generations. Yeah. So. Well, I have to say, for, for 2013, those they're they're like on the top of my list of like can't wait for oh, right there you. the new series. <laughs> I yes, hope you enjoy so. it. thank you very much. Thank it's you. Such a pleasure to meet you, Morgan.